Hi mate and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel, I'm Antonov2 as usual and today actually I wanted to bring you a preview of the patch 8.11 test server but I've been trying to get on all day now and it just hasn't worked. Every time I try to log in I get a message that the server's busy and I should try again later. I I've just given up by now so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to bring you a Yak Panzer 4 review because I've nearly researched my Yak Panther right here and I really cannot wait to get rid of this vehicle here so I'll be selling it right after this review here and uh, yeah so that's why I'm doing it basically I'm sorry that I couldn't bring you the patch 8.11 stuff maybe I'll put a video up tomorrow but it's quite unlikely so maybe the test server will still be up next weekend now that I think of it I won't be there next weekend so probably you will not be getting a preview of patch 8.11 from me but I mean it's content wise the patch is not all that big anyway so probably most of you should not be that interested in the changes yeah but let's just get stuck into this Yak Panzer 4 review here uh, I'm obviously Obviously on my way to the Yak Panzer E100 right here. As you probably all know in patch 8.11 coming up now soon. The alpha damage of the guns at that at the moment do 850 damage per shot will be nerfed to 750. But for example the Yak Panzer E100 will not be nerfed at all. Nothing will be changed with this tank. And it will still be doing 1050 damage per shot. And I think the fact that for example tanks like the Object 268 or the Fosh 155 now cannot pump out that massive alpha damage anymore will really make the Yak Panzer E100 perform a lot better because it means that the Yak Panzer is really important for tier 10 battles now because it's one of the few tanks that can still deliver monstrous alpha damage on the battlefield and I think that's what makes this tank line really interesting. Now I've been grinding down this tank line quite a while, it's never been my primary target to get the Yak Panzer E100 or any of the tanks in this line so I've, I've just been going along this line casually basically. And up to now, all these tanks here have been quite good, actually. And I think all the tanks to come will be quite good, too. But the Jagdpanzer IV sitting right here in the middle of a tech tree is just the weak link in the chain. It's a really bad machine. It's generally considered to be the worst tier 6 tank destroyer in the game, and rightfully so. And the reason for that is the gun selection of this tank. So basically, this tank all in all is quite good. It's very stealthy, very maneuverable, but the guns really suck. It basically gets exactly the same gun selection as the German tier 6 medium tanks. And these medium tanks here <laughs> are not famous for their good guns. So let's quickly check out the stats to see exactly what we're talking about here. The Yak Panzer IV gets 600 hit points, that's quite decent at tier 6 for a tank story actually. For example the SU100 only gets 580, so yeah, 600 is not a lot because it's a tank destroyer but for tier 6 tank destroyer it's alright. It's very light, it only weighs 24 tons because it's based on the Panzer IV which is a medium tank. So ramming usually is not an option, I mean you can ram some light or medium tanks at tier 6 or lower, but generally you should avoid ramming situations. Your engine is quite weak, 440 horsepower, but considering that you're very light, that's actually quite good. So that makes for a power, see, can we get a power to weight ratio? No, we can't. Okay, I'm not going to figure it out here, but it's it feels quite maneuverable. It handles quite well. So generally, yeah, it's quite a speedy machine. And this top speed limit is really good too at 40 kph. Your traverse speed is 35 degrees per second, which is really good. That means that you can usually avoid circling maneuvers by enemy medium or light tanks. For example, compare that to the AMX-50 Fosh 155, which is n known to be the second most maneuverable tier 10 tank destroyer that only gets 30 degrees traverse speed so 35 is really really good news. The Yak Panzer IV also gets quite good armor actually it's 80 millimeters and angled very well that's comparable to for example the frontal armor of a KV-1 so you can bounce quite a few shots especially if you manage to angle your front about like this and there are not all that many weak spots really I mean you can aim for this hatch here but it's not the biggest target in the world and generally the front of your tank is quite sleek and will bounce lots of shots from equally tiered and lower tiered tanks. Now from higher tiered vehicles you don't stand that much of a chance of bouncing or for example if one of the Russian 122 mils is firing at you, you will generally not ricochet either. But a good deal of shots can bounce, especially of this part of your tank 
because it's at a very steep angle. Side arm of 14 millimeters is not very good, but we don't expect it to be as this is a tank destroyer, and it also gets only 20 millimeters of rear armor. That means that this tank's actually quite prone to RT damage, especially considering that it's got this really big flat top here. So uh, RT will actually be able to feast quite a bit of this vehicle. You have to always remember that you've only got 40 millimeters of side armor when you're angling your tank, so you want to angle it like this at the most probably. Next, we'll come to talk about the guns, and the guns, as I already mentioned earlier, are kind of the worst thing about this tank. You get the choice between two guns. First of all, you get a 7.5cm gun, uh, which is the stock gun, which is not very good, and then you can unlock uh, 7 .5, another 7.5cm, that's the top gun and the stug as well, and you can also get an 88mm gun. And it's difficult to say which of these two guns is better. I use the 88 because I like the alpha damage, which is higher in this gun, but generally you can also make a case for the 7.5 centimeter, so we'll quickly compare the two. Now, first of all, to get this out of the way, none of these two guns are very good for a tier 6 tank destroyer. For example, the SC100 at tier 6 gets the 122mm gun or the 100mm gun, and even the, for example, the ARLV-39 gets a 90mm gun or 105mm gun, which both do a lot of damage and are very good guns, actually. And the Jagdpanzer IV does not get very good guns. So, first of all, the rate of fire, obviously, is quite a bit better on the 7.5cm, but considering that this is an 8.8cm gun, the rate of fire is still really good on the 88 your penetration is about 20 millimeters better on the 7.5. That's quite an advantage at tier 6, actually. And looking at 132 millimeters of penetration at tier 6 is really poor, especially for a tank destroyer. Considering that this tank is supposed to be sniping, really, or, well, I wouldn't play it as a sniper, but it's a tank destroyer. With 132 millimeters of pen, that's going to be a real problem. You ca will bounce a lot of shots, even with equally or lower tier tanks, and we don't even have to start to think about tier 7 and 8 vehicles that you'll encounter. So that's a real problem. And even on the 7.5 centimeter gun with 150 pen, that's not all that good either. I mean, it's all right, but it's not very good. The damage, however, is a lot better on the 88. It's nearly twice as high as on the 7.5, 220, rather than 135. Combined that with a still quite decent rate of fire means that the 8.8 .8 not only gets a better alpha, but also the better DPM. And I think that's one of the major advantages of this gun. The accuracy is 0.35 on the 88 and 0.33 on the 7.5. They're both fairly accurate, but the 7.5 has got rather sniping accuracy, while the 88 is more like it's medium range accuracy, I'd say. I'd call it supporting fire accuracy. But the aiming time is outstanding on both guns. Now, which of these two guns you decide to use is absolutely up to you. I went with the 88 just because I like my DPM nice and high and the fact that this gun gets better DPM and better alpha damage for me personally means that I chose this gun even though the penetration is lacking and the accuracy is not quite as good but still there's definitely a case to be made for the 7.5 centimeter but for example in some situations where you only can get one shot off at your enemy and then uh, he draws back into cover the 88 will hurt quite a bit more. Now, one thing you have to realise is you have to unlock the tracks before you can mount any of these gun upgrades. So, I would basically save up a bit of free experience. Uh, 4,110 you need to research these tracks because you really do not want to be playing this tank with a stock gun because it's only got 110 millimetres of pen. So, having talked about the gun, we'll quickly look at the rest of the stats. The gun traverse is not the most important thing in the world. 26 degrees per second is not very fast actually but it's more the gun traverse axe actually more important and while it's not bad it's not very good you can traverse your gun about this far here so it's all right it could be worse i'm looking at the french tank stories here when i'm saying that but still it's not very good it can it can be quite restrictive in many situations and it really does not allow you to angle your tank and still keep your gun pointing at the enemy as you can do in some tank destroyers so that's actually quite disappointing your view range is only 350 meters which is a bit underwhelming the average view range at tier 6 is about 360 so 350 is a bit below average but considering that this tank is very low profile 
that's actually all right. It's not that bad. And it gets 415 meters of signal range, which is actually not very good. For tactics in this tank, it's basically a bit controversial because I personally often use this tank as a, kind of an assault gun in the first line because it's very fast, it's got good armor, and it's not all that accurate, but your bad pen means that you have to aim for weak spots. So with the 8.8 centimeter, I definitely use this gun as a kind of, a this tank as a kind of an assault gun in the first line or as a supporting tank from the second or third line. With the 7.5 centimeter gun, I'd use it as uh, rather uh, as more of a sniper, but I think it's actually it actually performs better with the 88 in a kind of a brawling role if you can say that for a tank destroyer. And I think that's the way this tank plays the best. But I've also had plenty of games where I've used it as a kind of a supporting tank, not exactly sniping, but using it at, for example, 200 to 300 meters range, and I've done quite well. Gameplay of that's coming up in a few minutes. Now, to maximize your performance, I definitely mount vents and the gun rammer. Uh, and for third piece of equipment, you can basically choose between a camo net and binox. I went for the camo net because it's cheap, but Really, I think you would get more benefit out of Binox. Uh, well, Camelnet's good too, but this tank has got one of the best camo values in the game. That's one of the few good things that you can say about this vehicle. And Camelnet's really nice, but generally I think you get more benefit out of Binox. Or you could even go for Coated Optic if you find that you play this tank uh, in the first line as a very aggressive vehicle. Um, but generally, I would go for Binox as a third piece of equipment. For crew skills, definitely stack camo on your entire crew. Swap it for six cents on your commander when it reaches 100%. After that, I'd probably go for Brothers and Arms on the whole crew or you could get repairs, it's difficult to say. If you find that you play this tank very aggressively, I'd rather go for repairs and not for Brothers and Arms. If you play it more as, as a support vehicle, get Brothers and Arms. And I don't really see why you would want to keep this vehicle, so you'll probably be carrying your crew over to the next tanks in the line. And from tier 8 upwards in this line, actually repairs is more important than camouflage because all these tanks have not got all that good camo rating anyway so probably repairs is a better idea but on this tank here camo is really important so i hope i could give you a good overview of this tank and well yeah its strengths which are quite few and its many weaknesses uh, especially the gun but I've been jabbering on a lot here about how bad this tank is and how underwhelming it performs but that's head out to the battlefield to see exactly what I'm talking about so actually I wanted to show you two games today but of course something went wrong again as usual and I've only got one game left because uh, oh, it's a bit too loud and makes it a bit quieter first yeah because uh, the first game I wanted to show you on Lakeville somehow isn't working and I always keep getting a black screen when I open it and that's why I'm only left with this game here on Sacred Valley. This is a game I played two weeks ago or maybe last weekend I'm not quite sure. Anyway I'm platooned up with my two mates General Denny and Redbird Forest and I'm heading over this bridge here and I'm kind of taking up a sniping position right here and one thing that I failed to mention earlier was the really bad gun depression of this tank. This tank literally has got no gun depression whatsoever. So right here you can see me having problems. For example, I can't even hit uh, or put any so shots down uh, on those houses up there. Now I'm kind of relocating a bit, but I'm, it's kind of difficult. So as you can see, I'm the, basically the only person from my team guarding this side and everybody else is lemming off to C1 or C2. So I'm on my own here more or less. Okay, there is a, let's see, there's a, okay, that, that guy doesn't really count, he's a tier 4 light, but there's a Churchill 7 who's kind of close and there are loads of AFK guys in the base, but there's actually nobody really here trying to help me. So not all that much is happening luckily yet. So I'm just waiting and hoping that somebody will come along. 
And you can see me really fighting the gun depression here. So we've managed to take out a T25 on the other flank, which is good. It's got quite a dangerous gun, that tank. And you'll know that it's a tier 7 game, so we're not the uh, number one hunt show here. But, well, there are only 47 tanks in each team, and two of them are artillery in our team. Enemy team's only got one artillery piece at tier 7 and three real tanks. And it's a platoon, so it's quite, they are quite dangerous. But if they're probably they're going to stick together, so if they decide to push north, then I'll probably be able to avoid them down here. However, uh, of course, in turn, if I decide to push south, I'll be in trouble. So there's the new tier 5 German tank destroyer there, the Panzer SFL-4C. And this is the kind of target you really want to be shooting at in your Panzer... F uh, Panzer... Oh, I forgot the name, Jack Panzer IV. Because you can see right here the great DPM, the great rate of fire. So we're able to really chew up this guy and finally take him out. And you can see... At these kind of ranges, 300, 400 meters, the accuracy is absolutely sufficient. So next we're going to go for that Type 58, but you can't see him anymore. Let's see, am I going to take some blind shots? Yeah, I mean, so long as I've got nothing better to do. But now I'm retreating because that uh, Easy 8's coming around and I don't want to be spotted by him. And you can see my two friends have kind of broken through the center a bit and the our guys that have gone around north are at the enemy base and capping so my friend he's in his vk 3001p there because you see we're planning to both get the yakpan z100 and he's going to get the tiger p and the ferdinand from the tiger p and i'm basically going down the tank story line so that was quite a lucky hit there on the Cheeto. Now the Panzer IV rams me, which is all right. Ah, that's that's something really important here. The Panzer IV takes out my engine. Now that happens a lot. We'll just quickly see where that shot went. You can see it went. It didn't even hit our low laces. It just went below our fighting compartment, basically. It was not even the lower glacius, and he basically knocked out our engine. Now, engine fires happen a lot in this tank, but a lot of the time what happens too is your engine just gets knocked out without being set on fire, like in this case here. And basically any shot at the lower part of the tank, not even the lower glacius, just frontally uh, the lower part of the hull will take out your engine or damage it or even set it on fire. So. Yeah, I would re definitely recommend putting an uh, automatic fire extinguisher on this tank if you can afford it. Even if only to minimise the chance of fire. So I've got four kills already because that Panzer IV played quite stupidly against me. And also I had backup from my teammates. Now there's a cheeky M5A1 steward coming around uh, feasting on our AFK as in base. So that's his lucky day. He just basically hit the jackpot because he was able to take out a tier 7 tank destroyer. <laughs> okay. But now he's going to get trouble with me. Come on. Not taking any BS from this guy. And this is the kind of way the Yakpanzer 4 really likes to be played. Close combat, really nice clutch shots at close range. Really, really intense close quarters combat, that's what this tank likes. And right here you can see the really good speed, I've by now repaired my engine because I really need my speed here to catch up. I'm on 5 kills right here so I'm doing quite well and yeah this is this is really what I like about this tank, that you can, you can basically go in close and because it's got a really good aiming time of 1.7 seconds and the gun has got a really good rate of fire You've got a lot of flexibility in these kind of situations, and also couple that with your good maneuverability. Now, right here you can again see the great DPM, but at the moment I'm really making this ta tank sound better than it is. It really is not a good machine, really. And this was my best game in it, I think. And usually your games will be a lot worse than this. I mean, I had another good game on, let's see, it was Steps. I'm not quite sure I didn't save that one, but... 
I had about five or six good games while I was playing, or like really good games while I was playing this tank. And the rest of the time it was re just really bad or mediocre. Now, I, f I really feel like with this tank, it's either, like, it gets two extremes. Either your games are really good or they're really bad. But most of the time, they're really bad. And uh, yeah, right now, I just missed my... Uh, top gun there by not killing the T-34 I think it was a type yeah it was a type 58 so now I'm trying to get my top gun of the Cromwell but I did a really fatal mistake here because I misread the map and or more accurately I didn't read the map at all and I figured that it would have more backup here but then I'm here in this situation and basically all the backup that I had in the first place was a PZ-38 NA and he died, so now it's me alone against that Cromwell here. And I'm not standing very good chances because he's got a very high penetration gun against the tier 6 vehicle. And my armor isn't worth very much against him. And yeah, he's on very high health, I'm on very low health. So I'm very lucky because he miss, uh, no, he doesn't miss his shot, but he bounces. His second shot only traps me, which allows me to put a second shot into him. But then he quickly reloads and finishes me off. So that's that. And I think we still win this game. But, yeah, I'm sorry that I only had this one game for you guys, and uh, that's not all the apologies that I've got to make, because there's a second one that is that I can't show you after the game starts, so I'm sorry for that. But somehow, whatreplays.com decided not to show them after I uploaded this replay, so I'm sorry for that. But I'm pretty sure this was the game I got my Ace Tanker Mastery Badge in the Panzer for. Yeah, it was quite a good game. I think it was the best game I had with this tank. And I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it could showcase some of this tank's gameplay for you guys. It's not a very good tank, really, to be totally frank with you. And it's this kind of tank that you basically want to free XP your way through, or that you do not usually enjoy playing. It's not like you say, oh yes, let's have a spin in our Jagdpanzer IV. It's not that way. You just, it's more like, oh no, not the Jagdpanzer IV again. <laughs> so, yeah, it's all right. It can be good in some games, but generally it's not a very good tank and I can't really recommend it. Anyway, I hope I could showcase it for you in the course of this video. If I could, consider giving it a thumbs up below or even subbing to my channel. I would appreciate that a lot. And I've got some bad news for you guys and that is that I won't be there next weekend. So that means you won't be getting any actual content videos from me for the next two weeks but of course there's a bit of good news too and that is that after those two weeks I've got holidays again it's winter holidays that means that I'll be home for an entire week and I'll probably be able to put up a video nearly every day so that means I've got loads of content coming up for you guys maybe also from the patch 8.11 test server definitely I've got a t29 review coming up for you guys and all that good stuff so stay tuned and I hope I see you up there on the battlefield bye bye